The last time when we had this level of drama was when Nick Merck's skin was apparently removed by Activision and instead of that they ended up having that friendly UAV online guys uh, and today this drama has overtaken the internet we're talking Asmongold and Demion TV let's go for two likes on the video one two uh, one like for each gender here Bruh. guys or maybe we can go for like 1000 likes for 1000 genders guys like the video God will bless you and roll it let's see I got a bunch of things I want to go over today from entire oh, no. government unions being gaslighted into combating what they believe is extremism in video games, yeah, a consulting gamers. group demanding the erasure of anyone who doesn't fit their agenda, the originator of the whole sweet baby discourse doubling down despite a losing battle, and that whole messy situation surrounding Asmongold and the Dragon's yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogma 2 nonsense. We covered that not long First, let's yeah. start with the Anti-Defamation League, or ADL for short. This story originates from this post they had that's making the rounds on Twitter where they say, As digital social spaces, online games should be regulated to address hate and extremism. It's yeah. vital for Congress to examine extremist radicalized- Yeah, apparently gamers are not the core audience for games, everybody. Yeah. No. Games should be regulated right now, and apparently, I'm not sure if you guys heard this or not, but FBI and the 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 the, the, the security, uh, I'm not sure. Like, there's another term for it, but the FBI is investigating gamers right now. Because <laughs> if you play Call of Duty and you say something like too out there, you can apparently be checked in though. Organization in these spaces. They're gonna of course, this article ass. and this entire discourse has coincidentally been brought to light surrounding the emergence of what these organizations are deeming Gamergate 2, as well as due to the whole presidential elections coming up this year in America. And we all know whenever there's a presidential election, the debates and hot takes from both sides get demon core yeah. levels of nuclear. Yeah. So naturally, whenever big events like these... Yo, okay, as a brown man though, I'm not using that as a, as a crutch, but nowadays everybody plays and pulls that race card, so why not I Bruh. do it as well? Come on, I'm a hybrid version out here, you know? You know what I'm saying? But as a brown man who's in Canada... Canada, by the way, is even worse than America right now, okay? But, so that's not even a flex here, okay? So as somebody who's brown and in Canada... If you're in the U.S., who are you voting for? Like, I, I only am hearing Biden and Trump, though. Uh, who else is going to be out there? Like, who are you voting for? I know this can start like a wildfire, but hey, man, let's start a wildfire. Just go down. These sorts of organizations emerge out of the shadows to use their power to get more constraints on ordinary people. What the ADL is proposing here is that video games across the board from forums, in-game chats, and more need to be regulated far more heavily than they already are. And now with the whole sweet baby disaster unfolding, according to the ADL, this is somehow our faults. And yeah. therefore, Gamers. because of Gamergate 2 essentially a Gamer becoming song. a thing these past few weeks, this is proof alone that the average player of video games is now a bad person and you are all to varying degrees being radicalized by movements like these. And I guess to further lend a hand in what these sorts of organizations are saying, people like myself could be seen as problematic <laughs> because since I actually report on these sorts of stories that I am somehow radicalizing yeah. those who watch. It's a yeah, bro, all of us have been labeled as toxic gamers for years, damn it. A load of nonsense, of course. I mean, the post on Twitter even has a community notes attached to it which says, There is little to no evidence that people are being radicalized through online gaming. This is simply a push for further surveillance of the public disguised as a goodwill gesture to combat extremism. People primarily play video games to simply relax and have fun. And that's, that's really what it is. I don't consider anyone watching this to somehow be a radical individual yeah. in any way. It yeah. harkens back to that Kotaku- Yeah, I, I absolutely, I agree, uh, absolutely. But but they are saying that we're extremism. Uh, Department of Homeland Security, yay! So I was saying, right, like the FBI is investigating and also Department of Homeland Security. That's happening in the US. It's happening under God's hot sun, guys. God's hot sun, man. Holy crap. Article that attempted to infiltrate, as they put it, into the Discord servers that players were talking in. And like I said then, it was hilarious because the Discord server was public and everyone this Kotaku writer spoke to knew that they worked for Kotaku. It's incredible that Kotaku <laughs> attempted to act oh, like no. they were sending one of their journalists into some war-torn country amidst a civil war or something. When in reality, they just clicked a button on their computer and a bunch of regular gamers were like, Hi, welcome to our Discord, we just discuss games here. And Kotaku thought they were- I mean, what what are gamers gonna ask, right? Let's be real. They're probably gonna be like, welcome, thank you for joining my Discord server. Uh, what uh, what games you wanna play today? That's the only thing gamers gonna talk about. They're probably gonna crap on one game or the other game. They're probably gonna say, yeah, PlayStation sucks, Xbox sucks, everybody sucks. But that's really about it. They're gonna be playing uh, on the PlayStation and Xbox regardless. Uh, some of them are probably gonna like flex a little bit and be like, yo, bro, I play on PC. That's it. Like, sick is 
gonna hate, but then Sucker's gonna be playing. Like, that's literally it. That's gamers. Uh, leave the gamers alone. Simple as that. Like, gamers are not, like, extremism. Well, we're not going out there, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're just uh, chilling out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're just playing the games. But apparently, uh, it's getting too out there. We need to wokeify the games as well. And we need to teach the gamers. Yo, I actually posted this over on my YouTube uh, community page. Simple times, guys. Uh, 90 kids, raise your hands. Uh, only 90 kids will remember back in the days, bro. It was simple, bro. Uh, I'm not talking about your preferences. Some some brothers love uh, brother on brother action, though. I, I, I get it. Like that's your thing. That's your thing. So, uh, some sisters love sister on sister action, though, as well. So brothers can be on brothers, or brothers can be on sisters. Uh, sisters can be on brothers. All that kind of crap. Okay, but like, y y you know, what I'm saying back then in terms of gender, there was like one, two. Nowadays, like I'm I'm like counting. I'm like one, two, three. Four, five, say like this is what we're doing. Like we're we're counting the genders right now because uh, they be wokeifying everything though. Behind enemy lines or something, truly incredible stuff. But that's what these journals and publications like this do. They gaslight and attempt to make things look far worse than they actually are. The whole GamerGate 2 situation was coined by their side, and they are attempting to use it to gain more power in the future. There was this post from Vara Dark who also reports on these things. Check her out if you like. She does good work. But here's a post from her Twitter, and it kind of got me thinking a little. In her post, she theorizes how everything that's happened in regards to Gamergate 2 has coincidentally lined up with the closure of Feminist Frequency and the upcoming GDC, or Game Developer Conference Talks. Holy Which, in case you don't know, GDC is where tons of devs yeah. from across the industry come together to network and do big speeches to teach other devs about certain topics. It's basically a big conference where they learn and connect. I personally think that GDC is a good thing for the industry. But yeah. of course, G but but of course, GDC means games, uh, ga game devs conference, but this time they're going to turn GDC to WDC, uh, which means Woke Devs Conference, you know what I'm saying? So During GDC, you'll also have bad actors like Anita Sarkeesian in the past, yeah. or Kim Belair, who've also had their own GDC summits. And they got to spread their feminist poison onto the yeah. faces of everyone that was watching. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what Vera yeah, Dark yeah, yeah. theorizes here is that this entire situation is being manipulated by places oh, like Sweet man. Baby and others. Not in order to destroy themselves, but to effectively create a fabricated situation where they can use what's happening as leverage. And prove that because of the nuclear reception to their existence and what they do is not only good but mandatory for the future of video games. And they can use their victim mindsets which are protected by government funded organizations. Uh, what game is that? I know there was a little bit of Final Fantasy before I think, right? Uh, is this Final Fantasy? I I'm not like too familiar with Final Fantasy though. I'm not hearing Sega's talk about Final Fantasy. I believe like the new one came out or the remake came out, right? Such as Take This which is that branch organization ran by Homeland Security or the ADL themselves and then paint their company as victims. This then would reignite a new initiative across the entire industry in order to gain support for what they do. They yeah. push for diversity in games, then they ruin projects like Suicide Squad and more, players find out they exist, a tool is Same made to curate well. them, they then play the victim, rally their allies to run hit pieces like Kotaku, this then makes the entire industry speak out against this perceived lack of diversity in video games. And in doing so, Sweet Baby and others like them are then seen as victims of this entire thing. To be honest though, like, if these suckers want to have representation for everybody, then where is my representation at? Bruh. Right? Like, I, I need my representation, you know, I need my represent- My name is no longer Skizzle. It's Skizzle Axe. It's Skizzle Axie, guys. It's Skizzle Axe. It's Dave, Dave. <laughs> Strong, independent. Where is my representation at? You know, as a as a as a male that has recently changed his name, gender, whatever you wanna label me as right now, uh, I demand my I demand I demand my uh, my representation too, man which in a sense radicalizes studios and people who want to virtue signal harder to implement more DEI practices into their games. Yeah. And who gains from these services ultimately, but of course Sweet Baby and others like them. Vanguard, Essentially, it's a BlackRock, the ESG, they're doing it for the ESG score, just like how Alex once said that the water is turning the frog. Hey, yeah, man, yeah. I cannot say that like coherently because, uh, you know, YouTube, Papa YouTube is listening. I cannot say certain words on YouTube, but ESG, BlackRock, I mean, they're really trying to turn the, the characters in the game <laughs> yeah. Obviously I'm joking around, but it's a, it's it's the truth though. It really is the truth right now, man. Holy crap. And uh, I actually skimmed through this video and I actually watched it while I was like taking a nap. And he actually uh, apparently brought this piece of information which will blow your mind. Uh, it's hilarious, sad, and it's like because recently they're 
Uh, yeah, somebody that came out and said that she... It's like a black chick that came out, right? And see, she says that she doesn't like working with white people because white people makes her, like, uh, not feel good. Or she feels threatened, allegedly, right? And she said that it's not that, like, the white people are gonna be bad. She said something that I cannot really remember, but you probably know what I'm talking about. But then you will hear this, though. This.com, we have this article titled, For Spoken Consultant, Black Girl Gamers Appears to Discriminate in Their Hiring Practices While Claiming They are being harassed. If you need to look at how identity and pandering is ruining games and other forms of media, look no further than Black Girl Gamers. It's a consulting group like Sweet Baby whose entire existence is about black women and their identity in media. They even recently wanted to hire people for upcoming projects. Guess the qualifications for that job. Was it a bachelor's black. degree, experience in video games, or maybe having an impressive portfolio? Nope. All that matters, according to them, is looking for black women content creators that make Dungeons & Dragons content for some potential brand. This is why, like, things are going to crap. No, bro, like, why? Bro, back in the days, it was just about, like, it, it wasn't even about, like, the race, religion, uh, color of your skin. It was all about, hey, whether you're, you're passionate and whether you're qualified for the job or not. If you're good for the job, doesn't matter how you look like, doesn't matter who you follow, what religion you follow, doesn't matter if you're atheist or you are a believer in God, doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, bi, whatever, it did not matter. Nowadays, bruh, like, it's all about the color of your skin, it's all about, like, as gender, you gotta be strong, you gotta be independent, you gotta be independent. Like, uh, you, uh, they, uh, and with these, uh, <laughs> and these things wanna see, like, the, the longest uh, eyelashes as well, if you can, ding, 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 ding. You can join the forces if you cannot ding ding you cannot what the hell is going on dog no wonder why like the entertainment is going down the toilet no wonder why movies are wokeified to the level they are and movies uh, the scripts don't feel logical the scripts don't feel soul like it, it, they have stripped the soul out of it right like let me just keep it keep a buck 50 no wonder why games are turning out the way they are and once in a blue moon we get one good game and then everybody goes crazy everybody start loving it like they never loved a game before i mean understandably because when you have too much of the good stuff then you start like yeah bro every game is turning out good then i'm not sure which game to play like then you have that kind of problem which is a good problem to have when we have good decent games you're like yeah right that game is good oh man i want to play that i want to play this i want to play that and nowadays it's like every game is turning out bad for the simple reason they're hiring people not because they're good for the job but because the color of their skin and, and listen I'm, I'm a brown man okay so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna pull that race card right now because it's like it's gonna try and cancel me had i if i was fully white i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to say this crap i wouldn't even be able to say this Let, let's let's keep a buck 50 any white person watching why am i even talking like that y'all are humans y'all are not like white black brown or this and that we like bruh when yeah i get it like racism exists and you cannot like completely uh remove racism it's gonna stay that's how the world work okay but but like this is the next level this this is how you make people hate other people dog like the, the media has done a very good job dividing all of us well based on our religion race color ethnicity and all that crap like and now they're doing it with genders as well uh, and they're brainwashing all the females and uh with the it, it's absolutely insane dog it work hit us up that's it that's all that matters to them your credentials don't matter only the color of your skin and your gender and then you wonder why so much media is in the absolute pits of despair right now I have a particular bone to peg with Black Girl Gamers because they ruined Forspoken and inadvertently led to the closure of Luminous Productions, Damn. which was responsible for developing Final Fantasy XV as well. Their work on Forspoken led to one of the most insufferable and unlikable main characters in recent history. According to their own website, Black Girl Gamers were hired to consult Forspoken to provide insight on narrative and feedback on a pre-release build of the game that spanned from the gameplay experience to the portrayal of Frey as a protagonist of Black descent including topics such as colorism and texturism. This was an important consultation given that Frey is one of the first female protagonists of Black Descent and the fantasy game genre. And yet, they fumbled it so badly they closed the studio and that game <laughs> sold like garbage. Yet even then as- uh, Yeah, congratulations guys. You know, cheers to these suckers out here. In my mind I was thinking about like Saints Row because... Saints Row... I was one of the few guys that were like, bro, I hope this game carries us till GTSA. 
GTA 6 and the, those things couldn't even carry us till the GTA 6 teaser guys I'm not even talking about the trailer I'm talking about the tease the very first day they revealed the fact that on December the 5th we're gonna drop the trailer right these things couldn't even and they shut down even before we could officially hear about GTA 6 from Rockstar Games dog I was right there I was like bruh I hope this game carries us yeah it was CGI yeah you guys were like oh it's schedule schedule <laughs> it's CGI bro don't get hit in the G spot nah I, I hear you motherfucker I heard you right there, motherfuckers, but and I get it where you guys were coming from totally. And even I knew like it's CGI, but still I was like, it cannot be that bad. But it turned out like holy crap, bro! Like it's it, one of the worst game out there, and so bad that they turn they they shut down their studio. Why? Why you guys listen to? People that clearly hate gaming. Why can't you? You're making games. Understand this, right? You guys are making games for gamers. Keep it like that. Why are you making games for the non-gamers? Why you need consultants that don't even like video games? Why y'all need consultants that don't even care about video games? Just make what's good in your you know in your opinion and and look at what your audience likes obviously you guys got the blueprint you made games before we're not talking about like a new company right like we're not talking indie devs right now the indie devs are coming out with good ass games though and their games blow up the reason is not that uh, the, the reason is that there are so many bad games out there and then the indie devs games are now sticking out like a sore thumb because they're passionate and their project seems a lot more soul uh, not uh, th their projects are the opposite of soulless so basically they they have they put their soul into Bruh. the game and the game feels uh, real uh, to people and it caters to an audience that certainly is fed up by all this uh, bull crap that's going on as I previously showed, they're apparently getting deals regardless with places like Dungeons and Dragons anyways. It's as if your performance and actual ability to create surefire hits doesn't matter in this industry and all that really matters is your identity or what's between your legs. It's no wonder everything is so backwards. So many companies are bleeding money, but they don't lose sleep, I guess, because they think, well, we lost millions, but at least we're not racist, I guess. Yeah, the fact right, they confidently like... explain their services on their own website as... Black Girl Gamers is uniquely placed in the gaming industry. The intersection of our team, community, and experience allow us to offer a number of consulting the problem is not a female character or black or white or brown or whatever blue female character Bruh. blue man character that's not the problem though the problem is just that y'all are pushing y'all are you're completely making the game soulless though you know what i mean y'all are just forcing trash out there for the sake of it and then you have to shut down your studios after that you know like services for clients within gaming and tv film industries our services range from aiding studios and developers in their game character development, consulting on go-to-market strategies, DEI recruiting strategies, influencer marketing strategies, and more. So what they offer is a waste of resources pretty much, and they promise if you want your game to implode like Forspoken did, you should pay this group for their services. Bruh. Why you would hire a group to Bruh. consult on your game when they fumbled such a major release like Forspoken is beyond me. The Crazy. founder of BGG is J.N. Lopez, and they were- I I'm sure some people still like Forspoken, and that's fine, but it's just that- the, the problem is not a female character. Look at Tomb Raider game. Amazing franchise. Sega's love it, though. I know Sega's love it for uh, one of the reasons. That, uh, uh, I know the reason, but it's like, nah, the game is genuinely good as well. The series is good. Now, it's another thing, right? Like, they're they're, work, they're working on the next uh, uh, Tomb Raider game. Let's hope that they don't hit her up with, like, a testosterone shot, though. <laughs> Yay. If Lara, if, Lara Croft in the, if Lara Croft in the next Tomb Raider game gets hit with a, testos a testosterone shot, then it's Joe over, guys. Hopefully interviewed not. interviewed in 2023 by Game Rant about how the work BGG does is so important to the industry. One of the questions Game Rant asked was, were there any video games that made you wish that their character was a woman of color or a black woman? To which Rant. Lopez said, and I quote, I would flip the whole premise of a number of games, especially the ones that go into countries and get their relics. I would flip that on their head. That's always been a dream of mine in general, but to be honest, no, I'm not averse to having white characters. I'm just annoyed at how prevalent they are. I wouldn't want to change an existing character that I can think of at the moment. One of my favorite games, The Witcher 3, is predominantly based on a Polish novel. I have seen no need for me to change that main character. What I want is more stories that are authentic to black, brown, and non-white people of color to be reflected in. I don't want to necessarily have to race bend an existing character for me. That's not the epitome of representation. It works in some ways and other ways. I want some original content. I see diverse, underrepresented characters in games like Apex who have kind of covered a lot of bases. There are also games like Overwatch, which I had initially had a problem with, and they seem to be picking up their slack now. 
but still as a game that has a majority of white characters, I still don't understand how you can call yourself a diverse game and have a majority of white characters, but a lot of them that do it right are games where you can pick from a roster. And to quickly interject here, Lopez was then asked, has there been any video games that you've seen that have gone in the right direction in terms of diversity? To which she said again, and I quote, Apex Legends is definitely one that's done quite well. The intention is there, and the same with Overwatch. Overwatch didn't have a black female character for so long, and they had six white characters that were male. Seven white characters that were female, and I was like, where's the black women? Out of the two, I would pick Apex because obviously they represent me, and that's where I'm here for really and truly. Deathloop was also great, and Ghost of Tsushima. I'm not Japanese, so I cannot speak to the cultural yeah. accuracy, but I really enjoyed that game. Japanese, mother trucker! End quote. It's amazing how she doesn't seem to enjoy games unless she sees herself in them and has a tendency to look at rosters like Overwatch or Apex and count how many characters can fit her ideology instead of just picking a character that is fun to play. And it's also funny that she proves the point of Gamergate 2 where she admits that Witcher 3 is one of her favorite games. When there's not a single black person in the entire game. That's not racist, by the way, since The Witcher is obviously based on a Polish novel and features Polish-looking people. But Lopez owns herself that- Are you sure about that one, though, you know? Are you sure? That, that's what they're gonna say, not me. But, like, damn, homie. This is really, really getting out of hands. At this point, bruh, like, I want my- I want my representation as well. Bruh. You guys probably want your re <laughs> representation. Let me know in the chat. And, guys, this is that video where Asman Gold responds because he apparently got cancelled as well. Click on this video on the screen, check it out. It's absolutely insane as to what's happening. On the left though, this video is about the upcoming GTA 6 game. Yeah, the woke mob are after GTA 6 as well. They're trying to cancel GTA 6 as well, guys. Check it out and I'll see you right there.